And here's Fox News contributor Jonathan Turley reacting last night on the Ingram angle. I think the opinion uh, is really chilling. And I think that the Supreme Court will make fast work of this theory. I hope it does. Uh, but I think this court, I think, did great damage to its own integrity uh, with this opinion. This is a time when we actually need democracy. We need to allow the, the voters to vote. This is hands down the most anti-democratic opinion I've seen in my lifetime. So I do think the Supreme Court takes it up. I think they take it up quickly, and I think it will be quite decisive and clear. One thing is a little yeah. tidbit we picked up on. Yes. Jason Willick pointed this out, that on the Colorado Supreme Court, the three that voted against this uh, all went to the University of Denver Law School. Oh, and the There's four who voted with? Uh, we're at Harvard, Penn, Yale, and Virginia. Oh, interesting. Okay, so there, it was a 4-3 decision there. Mm -hmm. And all seven justices in Colorado appointed by Democratic governors. And that court um, of the seven justices, they each serve 10-year terms. So some of them have a long ways to go. The 14th Amendment is a question here, and we always get an education on the Constitution. It reads in part, not the entire thing, it reads in part, no person shall be a senator, representative of Congress, or elector president, or vice president, who, having previously taken an oath, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same, or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. It continues there into other areas. Uh, Andy McCarthy, who knows this stuff as well as anybody, last night was saying that this does not apply to a president. And, and that's what that's the what, state appeals court yeah. said in Colorado. Yeah, so that, that's going to be argued. And apparently uh, one of the justices, I think, let's try and advance this, guys. Just a, This is a call for number six, okay? This is what the Colorado Secretary of State said last night exactly about that point about the president. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment does indeed apply to the presidency. Um, and, and honestly, I think uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment has to apply to the presidency because if not, it's a get out of jail free card. Okay, so these are the lines that are being drawn. Let's bring in Jose and Matt to talk about this. And gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Um, Matt, go first. Um, does it stand? I, I, it certainly won't stand. I think, Dana, you are right. This will get decisively wiped out by SCOTUS. But I think the problem is, again, there's been no due process, no conviction here. And these people who brought the suit in Jenna Griswold right there are talking as if he'd been convicted of something, which he hasn't, right? And Chris Christie's right. If you don't want him to be president, that's fine. Valid opinion. Do it through the voters, not the courts. And one other point, you know, Joe Biden likes to cloak himself as a defender of democracy, Mr. Defender of Norms, in many ways, that said he, why he ran for president, I can promise you we'll probably hear very little from the White House and him on this, and I wouldn't be surprised if the media gave him a pass on that. Jose, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., running as a third-party candidate, said that I'm not a Trump supporter. If I were, I wouldn't be running against him, but I want to beat him in a fair election, not because he was kicked off the ballot. Do you anticipate that President Biden might say something similar? Look, I think on first and foremost, I think this is going to end up in the Supreme Court. I think we can all agree uh, in that regard. I think it, you know, unfortunately, I think it's going to get reversed. But at the same time, I think the challenge here for the conservative judges is, number one, if they are as originalist as they say they are and they read uh, word by word the 14th Amendment, they're going to come to understand that the president, uh, the presidency is part of the office that should not be held if you, you know, if you engage in an insurrection the way that the former president did. I think, look, the White House will respond. Uh, uh, president Biden will respond at the end of the day. It's, it might be a good day for the former president uh, when it comes to fundraising numbers, but it's not good. It's not a good day for the president when it comes to morality, and it's not a good day for the president for the former president it, 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 when it comes to doing the right thing. I think there's a lot of voters that are going to look at this decision in Colorado, whether it stands in the Supreme Court or not, that are going to have second doubts and they're going to second guess whether they should be voting for president. Okay. For but, former but, president but Jose, Trump. just uh, you said it's going to be overturned by the Supreme Court. And that, that's what Matt said. It, it, if you both agree on that, and if you're both right, the debate's over. Uh, here is, however, uh, the legal challenges all across the country right now uh, against the former president. In, um, would you call it yellow, Dana, or orange? I'm going to go with gold. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on. So in gold are the states with suits to bar Trump from the ballot. So that's all pending. And then in green are the pending appeals. And then you've got Colorado, which has ruled uh, to bar Trump. Uh, Matt, so if it goes to the U.S. Supreme Court, just so we're clear on this, if they strike down the ruling in Colorado, does everything on that map come off then? 
I, I mean, it should. I, I don't think Democrats want to open Pandora's box here, because if suddenly, for some reason, you can start striking people off ballots via the courts, they won't like where that leads, possibly in some conservative states, wrongly so. Uh, but again, I think the problem here is it's not a matter of whether it applies to the president or not. It, 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 he has never been convicted of anything regarding what the 14th Amendment says. That's about due process. Um, and I, so I think that's a really important point, too. And one last point, you know, we're less than 30 days from the Iowa caucuses, as, as Mark said, time and attention are at a premium. So if you're one of his opponents right now, when all the attention is going to him, you're rightly having to defend him in this case. That's going to hurt you, especially as people, you know, tune out for three to five days, as normal people tend to do, or on the holidays from kind of the pace of news. This hurts his opponents in a way as well. Jose, mm -hmm. as the Democrats, the more they talk about the lawsuits against President Trump, the more his poll numbers seem to go up, and the less President Biden talks about his accomplishments, however he wants to frame them, the more his poll numbers go down. So I'm curious about the DNC's position, because I imagine that you would love to try to beat President Trump on the merits, but right now, is the courts your best hope? Well, it's not because we beat uh, former President Trump once. We can beat him again. And we got to remember, we look back at 2016, the night before the election. Uh, every single poll said that Hillary Clinton was going to be president of the United States. And every single poll was wrong. I think polls will be wrong again. Uh, we're still, you know, over eight, nine months uh, before the 2024 presidential election. That's light years in politics. I, I don't really go by, by polls. I think I go by, by the sentiment of the people. If we look at where the economy is going, inflation is going down. Job creation is going up. Gas prices are going down. So things are looking up for President Biden. Look, whether the polls say one thing or another, I'm more interested in what's going to happen on election day. And I think President okay. Biden will beat Trump once again. All right, Jenna, Good to have you both. Yeah, we got 10 months to battle that out, don't we? Yeah, I can't <laughs> tell if time is like 10 months feels like a long time or like next week. It might be here in yeah. a heartbeat. It'll fly. <laughs> Thank you, flies. Matt. Thank okay, you, Jose. Thanks. thanks for coming on. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.